Instagram here. So I'm just gonna, you just look right here and mm -hmm. we'll just chat right there and then you'll see, you know, guys come up right there. What's going on guys? Hey, John and uh, let's see, this is better if this is on. And it kind of washes you out a little bit. Uh, we're good. All right. Henry. Nice to see you, bro. How you doing, bro? Good. Good? Good how, to see you. How was the drive over here? Uh, wasn't bad. Uh, I left a little early because 195 is, uh, crapshoot most of the time. Yeah. You never know if it's good or bad. So I had to go to Lance's house before the little oh, okay. plugs. Yeah. So I went there and then I came here. So now are you still doing uh still doing that burn thing with Lance's plugs? I am. Are those a couple of them right there? Yeah. I uh I just delivered uh like thirty plugs to him. These are some of his finished plugs. Henry is doing this. We're gonna get into Henry's uh woodworking that he's doing, but he's doing these gorgeous uh gliders and he's actually got some darters right darters with yeah, 401 so well. um that he's doing the the burning technique uh and then they're epoxying over them and it's just you know makes makes a gorgeous plug super unique um so we'll definitely get into that a little bit later in the show um but henry you know i want to get everybody to to know you like i know you so so where did fishing start for you was it way back when you were a kid was it you know i don't even know the answer to that question actually where where did fishing where did stripe was it just stripe bass fishing you know where did fishing no. start for you freshwater like everybody else with my dad my dad was a dairy farmer so uh he had a farm in lincoln so the blackstone river was down behind it and i uh, used to take me down there with uh, some worms and stuff and uh we had a good time catching little fish and stuff and then he was uh, he was a dairy farmer, like I said. So he had one Sunday off a week, uh, a month, a month, a month. <laughs> a month, yeah, a month. And uh, yeah. he used to go to tog fishing out at the Cape with my mother. Uh, I've seen some pictures. They used to get some really good to tog. What year are we talking about right now? Uh, before I was born, so probably fifty eight, fifty seven. Wow. Somewhere in there, I was born in sixty one. So uh, yeah, I'm old. <laughs> Stop it. Or as my kids would say, you're older than dirt, Dad. Uh, and then uh, we did some saltwater fishing. We used to go to beaver tail when I was little and just throw uh, worms and stuff like that. And it was a good time. And then, like uh, blood worms and stuff? Yeah, sea yeah. worms. Yeah. And uh, I remember those things used to freak me out with the little pincers. Yeah, they dude, cut, they freak me out now. I used, like, to cut the head, I used to cut the heads off all the time. Going to that Hudson tournament with for Mr. Poseidon, those oh, little yeah. worm things are so creepy right. looking. Yeah, But they work. Yeah, they, yeah, work, they right. work. I can't believe it. Even going to fish that tournament, man, it's a muddy, disgusting river, and you put this little worm on there and you catch a fish. I, I know. Mean, this isn't, it, it, you know, it, it, you know, all this fancy, all this fancy I shit. <laughs> and they won't hit it. All I'll hit is the blood. I know, it's, or it's, worm. it's crazy. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. And then... Uh, my father got sick when I was younger, so uh, he died when I was a freshman in high school. And uh, my uncle uh, kind of took over and uh, used to take me blue fishing out at the Braga Bridge in uh, Fall River, the old Braga Bridge, the one that raised in the middle. And uh, oh, really? the Bregnan, Bregnan Street Bridge, I think it was called. The one the that's Braga like Bridge. up and it's yeah. all metal right now? Right. Really? Yeah, and uh, we used to fish, get herring at the Palmer River and we'd go with a bucket of herring and go blue fishing off the bridge. And my first encounter with a big blue was like a 16 pound blue that 
it was just it took me forever and then i i was like 12 years old i had to hike down the rocks and try to get this thing without killing myself no kidding dude but uh i was i was hooked after that and uh what kind of setup were you fishing back then oh god conventional just you know it had i think it had linen line on it yeah like one of those old boat sticks yeah you're like an old rockefeller guy yeah exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> I wish I, I wish I had half the stuff my father had. I do have a couple of plugs that uh, our good friend Charlie, uh, who's passed away, had refinished for me. Uh, oh, that's great. I got a couple of original Gibbs trollers that uh, I'm going to save. I got a... I think Charlie's sister is tuned in. Is she? Yeah, yeah. I think How so. How you doing? Yeah. And uh, I did that. And then uh, I got to high school... And uh, my homeroom teacher happened to uh, be a fisherman and my football coach. So I kind of got hooked up with him. And uh, one thing led to another, opening day fishing and stuff. And uh, he had a boat. We used to go out in the boat all the time. And then, I don't know, I graduated from there. My brother, I got married. My brother-in-law had a boat. So I go out with him. I go surf fishing. My nephew, Sean Bailey, who we all know, uh, when he was little, I'd go fishing with him at he's Duck a, he's, a big, he's a big fella. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't that big. He was small back when he was little. It's amazing. But uh, we'd do that. We'd go duck hunting and fishing. And then kids came and fishing got put on hold for a while. And then I got back at it. Yeah. And uh, here we are today. So, but, but now, like, so all that fishing that you were doing through life... Mm -hmm. You know, comparatively to the type of fishing that you're doing now, like you are in the surf now. Were you in the surf like you are now then? Uh, not till I got married at first. Uh, I did a little jetty fishing and stuff like that. But then my brother got his beach pass uh, back in the early, right up, right before I had kids. So it was the early 90s. And uh, I said, oh, I got to get one too. And uh, yeah. that's where it all started. Yeah. And we were okay. just, we were maniacs. We'd, uh... Before I had kids, we'd go to Chatham, like, a couple of nights a week before the breakthrough at Nauset. Yeah. And uh, the fishing there was phenomenal. We'd go, uh, Steve, my brother's good friends with Steve McKenna. So we'd get the intel on when the bass were running there and stuff, and we'd go to Chatham. The fishing there was, like, phenomenal before that breakthrough. Um, I'm not familiar with, with what you're talking about. Right at Chatham Light. Uh, before the breakthrough at Nauset, uh, okay. there was a big current that run that would run right in front of Chatham Light. And if you waited out more than two feet, you'd be in 40 feet of water. Holy smokes. And the current there was, it was like the canal sometimes. It was like fishing at the uh, Salmon River. You'd cast up, and then you'd wait for that swing, and if the fish were there, as you soon as you end. got, you yeah. were tight. And yeah. you'd, you'd hear it like, fish on, fish on, fish off, fish on, fish off. Hey, it was you crazy. sound like that now sometimes, you know. Oh, I do. Yeah, I know. You're right. You're absolutely right about that. But yeah, and that, that's where it started. And uh, I'm just a maniac. So I, 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 I don't know what to say when. <laughs> no, and you know, and I think that I think that that's like, you know, part of, you know, what I respect about you and appreciate about you so much is that like, the conditions can be brutal, man, and and you're getting out there, and uh, you know, last season you were on fish more often than a lot of people that I saw and you're on fish way later than you know people that I saw and I kind of want to you know get into that thank you for sharing like your you know where where your fishing yeah. passion came from but like you know I think especially what I saw with you last year is you took it to a kind of a different level so were you last season um and I know there were seasons before that but I'm just focusing on mm -hmm. you know last season for the sake of you know what we're talking about um you know what were you following bait patterns? Were you following conditions? Or were you just, you know, grinding it out? And that's like what led you to success? You know, kind of take me through your season last year. Because you were very successful when, you know, a lot of people struggled. So what was it? What was, what, what, what do you think your reasons for success were last year? Well, uh, it's a lot. you do have to grind. If you're a fisherman, you get to grind. You get, every spot changes year to year. Like, this year is going to be totally different than last year from all these storms we had. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my spot got beat up. You, you know the spot I fish mostly. Yeah. I mean, it's almost gone. Uh, it, just from trial and error. I mean, I, I'm going to start in a couple of weeks at my spring spot that's usually pretty good. Last year, I got my first fish April 11th. So um, I'm hoping... 
Your first fret, like your first oceanfront fish, April 11th? No, it wasn't oceanfront. It was uh, at a herring run. Okay. okay. Uh, up in the bay. Uh, oceanfront, I didn't really go till May. So what are you saying that that fish is? You're saying that that fish was a holdover? They were holdovers. Yeah, okay. I, but I think that yeah. the herring are running, so I think the holdovers are starting to sniff out these herring now. And they're going to be dumping out of the back bays because there's a herring run now. And the beginning of April, you're going to have the new moon. So I think there's going to be a big push of herring. Now, when do you think that those... Uh, no, I'm going to hold that because I don't want to sidetrack it because that's going to sidetrack no it. No, no, go ahead. I, I, I think that new moon's going to push a big push of, of, of herring. The in. April moon? Yeah. In? Pushing them in? Yeah, pushing yeah. the herring in. Uh with that high water in the in the new moon, it's typically what happens at my place where I fish. Okay. And, uh, Why do you think that is? They just sniff those herring out. I, I mean, and they the water's getting a little warmer. Yeah. They're dumping out of the back bays now and stuff looking to feed. And uh, usually by the beginning of May at my spot, I'll start getting fresh run fish. At least the last couple of years, that's what happened. And you're, are you determining that by sea lice? By sea lice, yep. yes. The first fish I get, they're always dark colored. They definitely look like holdovers. I know, isn't that so interesting too? Like, you ever you ever catch a striper that's like really light in color and has like a, a lot of purple patina on it? Oh, yeah. It's like very, like I'd say like one in every like a hundred fish. Yeah, it's, it's almost like, like a hybrid. Yeah, yeah. it's gorgeous, man. Right. It's such a gorgeous fish. It's like a shiny purple. Oh, yeah. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's, I've probably only caught like three or four, and, and I, they're just gorgeous fish. Oh, yeah. I, they just look way different than any of the striper. Uh, yeah. But, you know, you know, really gorgeous. Okay, sorry. Continue. That's all right. Uh, yeah, and come May, you start getting the fish that are the, they're really running up the coast and looking for bait. You get the bunker that are starting to come in. Last year, the bunker run sucked. I mean, I do do some boat fishing. Uh, the bunker were up in Providence for like three weeks, and then they were gone. Yeah, I, last year I was, don't know. But the I, year before that, yeah, the year before, before that, that, they, they were there. Oh, like, it, was it, was crazy. Like, it was like a boat city uh, down there. Uh, we, yeah. went out, we went out in the boat some nights. We'd get 40 fish to like 40 pounds. Like, it was nothing. Yeah. Uh, you had three weeks of, like I said, the good bunker run. This year was a lot different. The, the lack of bait, the, Big, for me anyways... There was a lack of peanut bunker everywhere. Big Jim, uh, when you say up here, comment what you mean by up here. Um, you know, I want to talk about that. Where, you know, what what state are you talking about? Um, um, go ahead, sorry. I think he's up by uh, Plum Island. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, for some reason, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the, uh, the lack of bait this year, the peanut bunker. The year before last, peanut bunker was so abundant. I had nights where the peanut bunker would just... The bass were just driving them up on the sandbar where I was fishing. You could walk on them. This year, it was sand eels. Sand eels, bay anchovies, sparing. Uh, do you ever, do you feel like those, those sand eels, like, pushed in at night, though? Because, like, yes. I feel, you do feel that way. Absolutely. Mm, okay. Absolutely. I agree with Dennis on that one. Dennis Zambrot is a big uh, proponent of that. That yeah. at night they're more active, and I, I do believe that. And... This year was weird. Uh, like, November was okay. It wasn't great. I've had better Novembers, but right after Thanksgiving, the bite just absolutely turned yeah. on for me. Yeah. But it was it was crazy. I had, but I had also the best had, December I've ever had in my life. We also had that, like, November... October, November... Yeah, those big like three storms. I was just... I'm trying, I'm trying to remember, like, when exactly those storms were, but it doesn't really matter. Those three storms that were kind of like in a row yeah. had consistent northeast, southeast, southeast had southeast. consistent southeast yeah. wind for a long time, um, which which resulted in a hook smash of table, <laughs> right? <laughs> which resulted in uh, you know a, a great fishery uh, for a couple of weeks there. And then the the downside to that is the southeast wind just dirties up the beaches. It does. It does. So you got to pick your spots where you're gonna go and the times and the tides like. Where I go, you, you got an hour window before that weed starts pushing in and yeah. you can't fish it anymore. There was but so, so much yeah. time last yeah. year. The, like June, July, that whole stretch yeah. was so weeded up with oh, that yeah. weed. It was crazy. Because crazy. of that wind. We had that miserable wind all summer. And it was it, it was weird. You couldn't get on any patents, for me anyways. 
It was hot like the year before. The no, break, break that. Can you break that down? Um, I get a lot of guys that like feedback about this show is, um, you know, they they find it easy to digest because we break things down and we just talk about things casually. Like break down what you mean by a pattern. Like to you, what is a pattern? Like the year before, I knew uh, it was my spot. It was high tide going up. As soon as that tide flipped where I was going, those fish would be stacked up on a bar. And if you got the right swing, it was doubles, singles, doubles. Because I fish and, the teaser and, a lot. And hold on on the teaser. There's okay. a, little, a little teaser on the teaser just now. Hold on. Henry's the teaser master. So we're going to get the seven on the table right now. Um, so, but like... Was it every every tie? Pretty right, much. So 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 my you know Brian Ernest he's got yeah. an episode on here. He fishes the same spot, and no matter the tide, day, time, sun, snow, whatever, he fishes there from. It's either six thirty or seven thirty until like nine, and he like calls those fish into that spot. He says, <laughs> "So Red, I he, can see Brian with his that. with his uh with his." I, I clicked I clicked not for kids on the YouTube. So this is with his fish whistle. He calls them in. Um, so so oh, God, I can um, see that. um so so he doesn't care about the tide, you know, and it's this two or three hour window every night, certain times of the year that he's, you know, in this spot. Now is that the same for you? Is that the pattern that, that you have going on? You don't care about the bait or the time or the tide. You just need to be in this spot. Uh, in this two-hour window, and, and you know, what is it? Talk to me about that. I'm a, I'm more of a tide guy. Okay. I, I, I seriously, most of the spots I fish in tide dependent. Uh, I'm a big proponent of just before high tide, to like four or five hours into the drop, and then I'm pretty much done after that. Uh, yeah. There are a few spots I'll go to at low tide, but I. I don't know. Well, tide just, fishery sucks. Yeah, I, I and I, I'm not good on the rocks, so getting out to a lot of these spots at low tide is like impossible for me. I have to pick and choose the spots I go yeah. to. And yeah. And the biggest thing is, and our friend Charlie told me this a long time ago: learn the areas that you fish if you're gonna fish them hot. Like I, I got four or five areas that I fish that I just. I'll go there at low tide and look and find out where the holes are and stuff because it changes all the time. So I know when I go back at night, I'm not wasting time on a certain area. I'll, I do my homework and I never used to do that, but now I do it more and I have great success by doing that. Uh, it works. Yeah, I, you know, and I, I couldn't agree with doing the homework stuff more. I have so much more confidence, like... I could go to the same spot. Like I, I totally agree on the same four or five spots thing mm -hmm. every year. And I, I, but I also try to like, I try to, um, go into my season getting a grasp on the four or five spots that I consistently fish. Right. And then like, as I, as I am figuring out those spots, like May, June, I will try to incorporate a couple other spots. Like once yeah. I'm, once I'm confident in, like knowing what's going on at the spots that I'm a regular at, I try to like throw in a couple other spots that maybe I've been looking at on Google Maps or maybe I've been right. talking with some other guys that I'm fishing with or you know what I mean? So I always try to do the four or five spot thing. I think that's great right. advice. Steve McKenna probably talks about that too. And he was yeah. great the other night at the oh, yeah, was He is such a wealth of knowledge. Steve McKenna, I don't know if yeah. you you know if you guys can. I'm gonna try to get him on the show here. Oh, that'd um, be awesome. Um, but you know, he he's he's really great. So I totally agree with the homework thing, man. Like in the like the the daytime fishing, I'm not good at, um, and I don't have the time to be good at it because I work during the day. So that's why like my fishery is at night. So doing the homework during the day on like the weekends, you take your wife, your girlfriend, you know, the dog, the kids, and you go walk the beach. You know, you're putting in some family time, but you're also putting in you know some time right. where at low tide you can it stinks, but sorry. Uh, you can, you can check out, you know, what's going on, uh, in your spot. And my confidence is so much better going into a spot where I know what it looks like at low tide, exactly. you know, compared to just getting out there in the dark because right. you can't see anything in the dark. You know, you're trying to go out there through the water with no headlamp on and, right. and you just can't see anything. And like you said earlier, every spot changes. And especially this year going into the spring season with all those winter storms and late fall storms that we had, 
who knows where the, all that sand went, but we're going to find out. Even, even the rocky spots have changed. Like, I, I've gone to look at the gun mountain down the uh, east wall. Like, the, the rocks are just destroyed. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure some of those holes, like, at the gun mount, Charlie's favorite place, I'm, I'm sure they've all changed. Yep. Uh, and who knows? And who you know? They it, they could right. they could have changed for the better. They could right. have changed for the worse. One spot could have turned into a big fish spot. Another spot right. could have kind of been, you know, it could have levied up so much right. that there's no place for fish to stage up, you know, right. or or ambush spots or any of that. So right. um, you know, so so patterns. You are a tide guy. You're into tides. Yes. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Um, now now I gotta get into teasers because the the locals are restless. Um, <laughs> So, right from the basics, I've never fished a teaser before, ever. Talk to me about fishing a teaser. Uh, teasers are great. They're a great tool. Uh, if there's little bait around, like this year we've had, uh, we had a lot of sand eels and sparing and stuff. So, basically this is my sand eel and I probably caught between, in July and August, Probably 80% of my fish were on the teaser. I had a couple of nights where I've had double 38s. Uh, I've had some fish on where you could feel them pull off, uh, off of one plug and you still land them and you know they're big fish. Uh, my biggest teaser fish this year was a 41, uh, which was crazy on a teaser. It's insane, the hook was almost straightened out. It's a, it's a good tool. I think it's an under underutilized tool. A lot of guys will shy away from them. They think it takes away from the cast. It does if you're fishing a big one. But like I said, these little ones, or if this peanut bunker, I tie these little peanut bunker ones that are phenomenal. The, the fish just destroy them. Uh, if they're on that little bait, sometimes they will not hit a big plug because they're keyed in on that little bait. Like I've gone out nights with guys that are throwing big plugs and I'm throwing a teaser and I'm out fishing them 15 to nothing. And those guys are saying, hey, Henry, you got any more yeah, of those? I mean, Do you have any more of those? Yeah, no. and, and he's got a bunch on him. Which and is, and which... the, the only time I will not fish a teaser is with a top water. I'll fish it in front of a metal. Guys cringe like, you're fishing that in front of a metal? I fish it in front of a metal. I come up with doubles. Like, it's it's yeah. crazy how good it works. And it's so simple. Uh, sometimes sparse is better. Sometimes a little big is better. I it works. When well, you're talking about hairs, you're right. Hairs on the right. Bait. Depends on the size of the uh, bait that's in the water. And All you gotta do is scout it out and look. Do you think that color matters on your teasers? Are you trying to you know sometimes eh, not really? No. I think color. It's like with plugs. Like Scotty Lawson said, uh, the paint sells the plugs most of the time. You know, I, the paint sells the plug to the fishermen. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it does, I, you know, dock a light. I mean, you can go crazy. Like, I, I got pink ones. Maybe you could throw for albies and stuff. But they'll certainly work, like, if the worm hatch is going on. In my spring spot this year, for some reason, there was a cinder worm hatch, and we couldn't get anything on the glides. I threw a pink teaser on. I was crushing them all night. Nobody could get one. I was crushing them. I was, it was crazy. Everybody yeah. was throwing glides. There was herring all over. They weren't hitting, but I threw that on. The bass were just inhaling it. Uh, it's crazy, but it works. Tony Stetsko fished a teaser in front of his eels. Yeah. Really? Oh, really? Wow. That's, That's crazy. A, I've never heard of teaser fishing uh, with a live bait, but I mean, it makes sense. Why I mean, not? It's like fishing a plug. It, yeah, it totally makes sense. And the eel's probably going to give it more movement. Do you, you, know? do you think that... I'm going to totally sidetrack off this teaser thing, and then we're going to get back to it. But it just popped into my head. Do you think that catching a fish on bait is less skillful than catching a fish on a plug? <laughs> That's a tough one. <laughs> uh, no, actually not. I mean... Yeah. I agree no, with you, for what it's worth. No, I agree no, with you. I think it does, especially with circle hooks yeah. nowadays, because... It took me a long time to get used to circle hooks. I would set that, I was in old school, come up with a set of lips, man. And yep. so many times I put, it took you have me to like a let it cook that itself. That learning curve. Yeah. 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 So, no, yeah, I, I would say it takes a little skill with that. I sure. still think that you need to be in the right spot, doing the right thing, 
uh, presenting the beat the right way. You know, I, I, I hear you, Brian. I you know Brian has taught me a lot about beat fishing. Easy uh, there. <laughs> you know, he's, he's throwing out a pokey chunk, and a lot of guys will just throw out a pokey chunk, right. and uh, they'll just sit there. You know, they put a yeah. spike in the ground and then start drinking a beer. That's not what's going on right. here. That's not, you know, that's not, yeah. you know, the kind of fishing that we're talking about. Right. right. You know, uh, not so much now because people have kind of picked up on the kind of fishing that I do. But when I first started getting serious about fishing, guys would be like, oh, like, I want to come fishing with you. And then I'd be like, all right, you need this, 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 and this, and then you can come fishing. And they were like, oh, like I can, I'm not buying corkers and a wetsuit and all this kind of great wet yeah. waders and stuff. That's, right. You know, it's because we're, we're, we're on a different, you know, level. But anyway, right. um, I think that bait fishing and plug fishing, you still, you know, the similarities, the key similarities, you still have to be in the right spot. Uh, you still have to know where and how you're fishing the spot that you're in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to be presenting your plug or your bait. You know, Absolutely. and that's huge. That's the biggest Absolutely. thing. You know, you still have to be presenting your bait or your plug to the fish in a way that they're going to want it. If you're fishing an eel the wrong way, it's all set. If you cast out an eel that's live and you're just like reeling in and you don't know what you're doing, the thing's going right. to bury itself in the ground and you're never going to catch anything. Or I, if you're casting out a pokey chunk and you just let it sit there, it gets covered in crabs and seaweed right. and bullshit and stuff. So I think it's both. I think they're both hard. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I get a chance to fish the Southwest Ledge uh, once in a while. But I got some friends with boats. And even out there, if you're not using the right, correct sinker to get it down, you got to just be bouncing off the top of those rocks on wherever you're fishing, whether it be the peanut or whatever. You just got to be tickling the bottom. And if you're up too high, you're not going to get those strikes. <laughs> Tickle the bottom. Well, you did. You get. You, you got to tickle the bottom, man. And let me tell you, there's some huge fish on the ledge. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, it's all right. A, it's the magician, not the <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot. It is good. Um. So all right. So so back to the teasers. Um. Uh. One of the guys on here is asking if you do you only fish the teasers that you make, or yes. do you fish other people's teasers? And did I, you, I, did you I, fish I, other people's teasers and then? start tying and uh you know start fishing your own or how did that progression start because now you make your own stuff and a lot of people don't make their own stuff and a lot of people do so like where did that why why do you do that why do you make your own stuff well there was a point where i was actually saltwater fly fishing which i actually am going to get back into this year uh, my brother's a really good fly fisherman and he's been bugging me he got a couple of big fish this year. He got a 38 on a fly rod. 38 inches? Yeah. Yeah. If he was uh if he was in the club, he would have beat Paul. Yeah. Which yeah, yeah. uh would have been good. He's on the waiting list to get in. But uh he uh Hey Chris. He got me into tying again. So uh yeah, I tie my own. I I I, I kinda do my own thing. I look at different patterns and uh I kinda Think what I think will work, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's like Steve Campo said: anything will work anytime. It's just you know you can take advice from everybody and patent it to how you want to use it, you know. Yeah, that's the way I look at fishing. Yeah, I I, and I I like that. You know what what tying on your own does for you is it allows you to put your own, uh, you know. All right, you just look at something on the shelf, and you're like, all right, I like that green, I like that purple, but it had a little bit of pink in it. Right. Uh, I'd really be confident in it. And that's what, like, tying for yourself, you know, enables you to do. And it, it, yeah. And, and that nothing better than oh, catching, catching something on, on your own something stuff. you made. Uh, ab yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you um, know that. No, yeah, it, and, and something else that, you know, is, is great that you tie yourself is you had that pink teaser that night that you were fishing and there was that cinder bite um you know you had that stuff on you and, and you made it so yeah. you know that was really great and then uh the other question that he had was does your season the time of the year that you're fishing depend on if you're throwing a teaser or not or are you always fishing a teaser uh in the spring generally i won't till i saw that cinder worm hatch uh one night and then i started throwing the teaser uh so that was so that cinder worm hatch you were talking about was like your Okay, now I'm gonna fish these teasers often. Yeah, I I, okay. I went right. I went back the yep. next night. I saw it. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna tie up a couple of pink ones, and sure enough, it, it worked. Usually, uh, the end of May, right up until this year, I was fishing a teaser right up until December, uh, just before Christmas, and then uh, after Christmas, I took the teaser off because you were out there a couple of times. It was all mullet. I mean, we had the mullet in January Dude, that last time we went out. The mullet last hey, year was, was insane. insane. And, you, you know, know, I was going to get to that with, like, you were talking about 
I'm so intrigued to see what is going to happen this year with bait. You and me both. Because last year, like, we had such a lack in pogies, but, like, we had such a, a strong mullet run, um, you know, so, and, and that resulted in, that, that strong mullet run kind of collided with those big storms that we had last mm-hmm. season and all that wind that we had and created a really great fishery, not for a long time, no. um, but the fishery, you know, if you could pinpoint where to go and where to be at was excellent for, for a while. It was rough conditions and you had to be smart about what you're doing, but the mullet coinciding with the wind uh, was fantastic. It was just like textbook conditions and bait being there at the same time. Yep. Um, so something that you're kind of deadly on, man, and, and if you go on Henry's Facebook, are you on Instagram? Do you post yeah. on Instagram? If you go on Henry's Facebook or Instagram, he actually posts a lot of great pictures of his setups, like when he's got doubles on or something like that. I mean, the guy is catching doubles uh, in the surf, you know, like oh, he's got one on his teaser and one on his needle. Can you talk about like that teaser needle setup, like distance between, how are you tying that teaser on? You know, what is your setup there? Uh, Do you I, have I, one of those needles? I've got, I've got one of his needles if you don't. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> I actually, this is the one I had to stop using. This, uh, this was two months old. And I this was been, two, this was two months old and, and it looks I, like this. Yeah, and I already been through, uh, two sets of that on it. Smoked. And that was some, there was some big blue fish down there too. Yeah. That were chewing it. And then I went to this one at the end. We don't have to tell him that, Henry. This was all from stripers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, yeah, that was the color, uh, mostly oh, when they were hitting the needles. I don't use any hardware. I use the uh, uni knot uh, to my fluoro because. And you use I, a fluoro. I use fluoro. So I, depending on where I fish, if I'm fishing the beaches, I'll use forty pound fluoro. If I'm fishing a rocky area, I'll go to sixty, like around Point Judith. I have a different setup for that. Where I won't fish a teaser, I'll just fish a needle, and some of my rocky areas. Uh, when I'm fishing the beach, I'll fish the teaser in front of the needle. And it's a uni knot with probably maybe 12 inches down. And it's real simple. Guys overcomplicate it. I just do a double overhand loop with tack in that's probably 10 inches. Yeah. So you got way if I'm using, longer, way longer than I've ever done a teaser loop. So yeah. you taught me that. You yeah. taught me that. Yep. Yeah, because with that, du- with that double 40, now it's, it's a little stiffer. It's going to keep it down a little more. And then... Maybe three feet down, I'll put my needle. And I fish it the same way you're fishing a needle. Cast it, you know, low and slow. And yep. I think something that's crucial that, like, you taught me with this whole, like, tying setup and that double uh, overhand, you know, 12 inches down mm-hmm. from where you're going from fluoro to braid. Yeah. So you're, you know, you're 12 inches down, and then you've got your double uni, and then you've got your 10 inches, right? Yeah. So I would do, like, a four-inch loop. Because uh, I don't know yeah. what I was doing. Right. So, but I always had no confidence in the fact that my teaser wasn't like getting wrapped right. up. It's so fitting. when you showed me that ten inches, and I was, it was just like kind of like a epiphany, like okay, why not make right. it longer and and using, you know, using a forty pound, right? Yeah. Yeah. So using that forty pound, um, fluoro or mono, you know, whatever right. you fish. Uh, the stiffness of it keeps it away from your main leader line going to your plug, you know, and Henry taught me right. all, Henry taught me all that, um, you know, some, it, it, it some, really guys use the, some guys use the Alberto knot where they'll keep the long tag end to put their teaser. To me, that's a little overcomplicated. I just like the double over and you, if you're catching a lot of fish, so that, that line's getting chased. So you don't have to worry about it all the time. Now you got 80 on there, you know, so yeah, if you yeah. catch a multiple fish, you don't really have to worry about it too much. So, all right. So, and, and do you think that your, like the needle teaser combo is like, do you fish that all the time? Cause that's what you're most confident in. Do you think that that's going to change this year? You know, what, what is, what is it about that needle teaser combo? Uh, I'm not really sure, but it's been working every year. And well, what's the reason that you put like, you know, like you, you, you pull up to the beach, what, you know, that's the first thing you're throwing in the water. Needles my go-to plug. Yeah. It just Why? Like, it, it, why? Because it catches. Let me in there. It catches. It catches. I I don't know why. Maybe because it's a sand ale bite and uh, that's out there. And I I just don't fish needles too. I, I'm a big glide guy. I'm a. If you all follow me, I'm a big Scotty Lawson fan. And uh, if the needle's not working, I'll go right to uh, 
or go right to Scotty's glider and they work incredible. I mean, there's we have so many good plug builders in Rhode Island. I know, seriously. I, I mean, besides Scotty, you got Will and you got another one, Lance from Wicked Schoolie, who's up and coming. I mean, we got so many guys that build tremendous plugs. I just I had so much confidence in Scotty's plugs. It's besides the needle, the first plug out of my bag is gonna be the glide. Yeah. And I think it's an overall good plug. It works. I have a lot of com confidence. Is the key, dude? You crushed fish in late November and December on that Larson Surfster. You want to talk about that a little bit? This one right here. This is still the one. Uh, I don't know why. I think the action. You can with this Surfster. You can actually pull it down to a couple of feet, or you can just. Do it on the top of the word. A slow retrieve worked for me. And like we were talking about, I think the biggest thing why that worked is the mullet that were around. It was big bait. And this thing just had tremendous action. And it would, it was a killer plug. I don't know what else to say about it. Was it, you know, were you, were you on your retrieve? It's because like December is such like a, it was you know, crazy. December is not a time that people no. are like, I'm striper fishing, and you were out there every night, man. Every so, night they say I was going to stop. I'd get a couple of fish, and my <laughs> wife goes, I thought you said you were stopping, but there's still fish there. But there's still fish there. But the, and it kept going right till January. It was crazy. It like, was a really year that, crazy. It was a year, the water was still warm. There was still bait, and the weather was nice. I, I, if the fish weren't there, I would have stopped, but they kept being there. It was nuts. And I, and most nights it was just... Myself, uh, my brother would come on once in a while, or uh, my good buddy Johnny Mac. Uh, Johnny was, Mac. Yeah, it just Johnny Mac. Awesome. Johnny Mac and his mom oh, yeah. are awesome. Oh, I love them. Yep, they are the best. They, they, they oh, are yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh man. Johnny, Johnny. Actually, before the first big storm, remember the first one we had the the night you fell over walking out there. You fell. <laughs> You in the got, same hole that you, you fell in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that night, Johnny had texted me. He goes, the fish are here. I'm like, I'm coming. I wasn't going fishing. I got down there a little late. He was leaving. I'm like, oh, this is... Yeah, the wind's, not a good sign. The wind's going to be okay. It was blowing southeast. It was manageable about 20. I fished for like three hours, and then all of a sudden, in the flick of a switch... That wind went from like 20 to 60 southeast, yeah. and I had to walk back to my truck, and I had to try to get by that wall that where you fell, and the water was so high, I didn't think I was going to make it. I was like, oh my God, the why weed, did I stay out? The weed, to give you a little information about why we both absolutely ate shit, is because <laughs> we were walking on like four feet of red weed. Oh. And, like, you just walk through it, and you just hope you're not going to step into a hole. Well, one of the steps was yeah. down, like, four feet. And you just, you know, start your night off being freezing oh, cold yeah. and covered in sand. It was a yacht sale. It was a total yacht uh, sale when I went No, down. then you're trying to go out into the beach and rinse your reel off because it's covered in sand. It was just yeah. sucky. And it's, like, 12 degrees outside. You can't feel anything. But the fish were there. Why do we do this? Because we have to. <laughs> but the fish were there, so it made it all worth it. Oh, my gosh. Um... All right. And, you know, I, I, you, who's the gentleman that you were fishing with that was really successful with a sluggo? Oh, my buddy Matthew from the club. I'm into that. I'm yeah. into the sluggo thing. You know, he uh, is a sluggo king, my buddy Matthew. Yeah. We'll be on a boat, on his boat, Bad Dog. He's got a nice little boat that we fish in the bay in. And he just throws that sluggo in and it just catches and catches and catches. I don't do too well with it. But no, I'm not sluggo? I, once in a while. Yeah. Dude, it's so funny, like, what plugs work, like, you know, the, that solstice needle. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I'm really proficient on that solstice needle. And I can't catch it on it. Yeah, and, like, yeah. I just picked up a 24-7 parrot needle. It's up here somewhere. Yeah. Um, and and I'm, I'm pumped to fish that. You know, yeah. I, I really like it. That parrot color. Do you, you know, on colors of plugs, do you, um, you're, you're a man of my... Uh, realm. I love all the blur pull stuff you got, you know, just because it's a nighttime thing. But, you know, when do you start to incorporate chartreuse or white or pinks? You know, when when do you start to put those things in there? 
when the blurple's not working. When the blurple's not working. So basic. Yeah. Just as basic as that. When, when, when something's not working, not working you're, you're swapping things. Yeah. Uh, the, the other plug I like to fish a lot too sometimes. I didn't fish in as much this year was the uh, Yozari Hydro Minnow. Oh, uh, man. Yep. I think I have one. Yeah. For a couple of years. Come on. For a couple of years, this Wonder Bread was the color down where I fished. They, for some reason, I didn't fish it as much this year, but that Wonder Bread, and it yeah. kind of, everybody likes the SPs. Is, they are good. is this a floating? Yeah. yeah. The SPs are nice, but that casts so much better. Yeah. I th Well, it's got that big weight yes. that like shifts right. from back to front, right. or from front to back when yeah. you're casting, and that and like... That can be a deadly plug. Like, yeah. Two years ago... That was the plug that, <laughs> for some reason, the Wonder Bread, I mean, you could not, not catch on them. If you had a Wonder Bread plug, I was giving them out. I had a couple of some guys weren't catching them. I'm like, here, yeah, yeah, put this on. I can't watch you not catch fish yeah. anymore. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, here, take this, and all of a sudden they're hooking up. So. And I think that, I think that for, like, a, so just to, to, before I go on to that topic, so you're changing colors and plugs as basic as when stuff isn't working. Right. So, so, so you've got, you know, on the table right now, he's got a lots of blur poles and a little bit of white and chartreuse. And is that kind of as simple as you keep it? Yep. Yeah. And you've got like some pokey patterns. On yep. I love how much Yozuri you have. Yozuri is the way to go, man. Yeah. I love They're how really much Yozuri you got. Besides, you know, Scotty's or Wicked Scully. For the average guy out of the box, the only thing out of the box is change the plugs. Uh, change the hooks. Yeah. The hooks suck. But these things, at a if you're anywhere near herring, this is the perfect herring imitation, right? Yeah. Here. And you've got, so on the back of this, you've got this weight here. And um, Dave Anderson from the Fishing Magazine, you know, I, I most recently heard him talking about um, the weight in the back here. What What is this? It's just, if you're not putting a hook back there, sometimes yeah. it'll give you a little more balance. And it will make the plug do a little more on the back end. So when you're twitching it, it'll dive a little more. Um, my nephew Sean's the one who got me into putting the weight on. Uh, they do that out of the Cape with daughters. Yeah, where do you even get that from? Uh, he got it. I think he, got, he fishes with a lot of shoppies out there. So, hey puppy. Come on. You want to come in? Hey, buddy. Uh, yeah, he. that's the way they fish out there uh, with those, and it works. I like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big proponent of... Come here, bud. Of no rear hooks on a lot of my plugs, like some out of the package. Like, I will fish these with two hooks on them, but the majority of my baits, I'll take the rear hook off because I lose weight. I've lost so many weight. You know, when you get that two hooks in, yeah, and you, you feel, feel that the one, other one, you pop, feel out? That one yes. pop out, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna lose. And I've been heartbroken so many nights. When you pop that one hook and you're like, please hold, please hold, and nope, go on. So we've talked a little bit about, like, in the, some of the other shows is, uh, like, that dropper. The dropper hook set up on the middle with this uh, yeah. barrel swivel, and it doesn't work on all plugs. And, you know, sometimes it's better than others. And, so, you know, you can just run, uh, you know, a single, a single belly hook if you want to. But something that I don't think gets talked about often when it comes to, like, the double hook or single hook setup is that when you've got two hooks, right? And use this SP as an example. So you've got two hooks, and you hook up into a fish, and one of the hook goes in the fish's mouth, and the other hook is on the outside of the fish because it's hooked on there. That fish now has the opportunity to bury this plug into the ground because it's on the outside of the fish's face. When it's just a one hook setup, chances are if this fish bites this plug, it's going to be inside of the fish's mouth and it doesn't have the opportunity to bury its, the plug into the ground and work it off of its, you know, off of the, its lip or its face because the plug is going to be in the fish's mouth rather than on the outside. And I don't know why, but I feel like I never hear about that when we're talking about the two hook thing, um, you know, and dropping ratios and all that stuff, but that's my theory on that. And I've also had nights where I fish where the fish will roll, especially on these things, where all of a sudden you'll be reeling a fish in sideways because somehow you oh, twist the no. plug out and you hook them right in the middle of the back 
I've had a couple where you hook them right by the dorsal fin, and yeah. you think you've got a world a, record bass on, a and you're fighting yep. this thing for like 20, and you come in, it's like a 28 inch fish, but it's yep. sideways. After it happens a couple times, right? Oh, yeah. You know, you know. Like oh, when it's God. just dead, and you're oh, yeah. sailing the thing in, and, it's just like, and it happens. It's yeah. not something that you're trying to do on purpose. It just, you know, it, it just happens, happens sometimes. Yeah. And I also, like, like, sometimes, like, I'll cast out. And like right away you hook up real quick and then you'll drop it. And yep. I think that like unfortunately it's just like it's a snag thing. Right. Whether like the fish came in and like whacked the plug and caught got caught up a little bit and yep. then like you set the hook and you lost it or like you know, there's a couple different right. reasons why I think quick hookups and snags, you know, happen. Um, so on uh, you know gear right on your plugs. So what what gear do you fish? And why and like the territory that you fish without like saying spots and I know we've kind of like given out some landmarks a little bit but like you fish a lot of beaches yeah and for a lot of like like myself you know I fish beaches a little bit but for this territory like most of my fishing is in boulder fields so and I think that you are kind of unique because you are a guy that fishes a lot of sandy beaches around here and you're very successful so um, I want to talk about reading sandy beaches and then I want to talk about, or vice versa, whichever one you want to do first, what gear you fish and why, and reading sandy beaches. So whichever one you want to start on that first. Reading sandy beaches. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go back to my nephew, Sean, again. Uh, I fished with him last, last, it was the middle of the summer, and I thought I knew how to read the beach pretty good. And he fishes the outer cape a lot with a lot of guys, and he was quizzing me on, what do you think about this? And I knew nothing about the beach from what I thought I knew. Uh, reading the beach is really a science. Where the holes are, you got to look for entrance points and exit points. Uh, and then those troughs in between. Where I fished this year, there were a lot of troughs where there was fish that it hold. You'd be ready to pull your plug out of the water and you get whacked with like a 20 pound fish like as you're pulling the plug out of the water from being in that trough. It was nuts. Uh, points, look for points, current, sweep, uh, and of course in the trough, look for the bait. Uh, there was a lot of uh, sand eels and uh, anchovies trapped in those troughs. Yeah, if you shine your light in the water you could see them. And uh, if you got to the if you got the right swing, you are hooked up every time. As far as the rocks, uh, there's only a couple spots I can go. Oh, gear! I fish an 11 foot uh, tsunami uh, trophy two with a VSX 200 uh, 60 pound braid. Uh, and when I fish the rocks, 60 pound braid. Yeah, wow. I I've lost a lot of fish that. Just yeah. almost. I think I fish 45 all the time or 50. Yeah. yeah. Charlie's the one who got me to go to six. Power Pro Super Slick. Yeah, yeah. that's what I fished. Yeah. And then uh, I go to a 10 footer when I'm fishing some rocky areas because uh, I'm always hitting the rocks with an 11 footer. Some of these spots there's not enough room to cast. Like when so. you cast down? Yeah. Like we're like, we're on, or your, on, back swing, back cast, on your back swing. On your back swing. Yeah. It like, does get tight because yeah. like where where you're where like where you're fishing right the right. angle compared to where the water's right. at. So and tight. I'm a short guy, I'm yeah. not a big guy, so a ten footer works for me. In the spring, um I'll fish a nine foot at uh up in the bay, I'll fish a nine foot uh Tika Dolphin with my V S one fifty, uh with forty pound braid and What's up, uh, man? It's it's a ball when you get some big fish. My first fish last year was a thirty eight inch fish. Oh my on god! On April eleventh, it was it even shocked me. Like, how can this be? My first fish this year was about this big. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've already got two this year, so I got you beat. I got two in January. Oh so. uh, yeah, my first fish were in March, so you got fish before I, I did. Yeah, so. Yep. I that's what I'm not surprised up. about. That's, I'm not that's zero percent surprised that you did that's, that. That's why I don't feel so bad if I don't get out there because of my knee surgery right away. So, but uh, I'll be out there. So that's pretty much the on the right on the 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 trough thing, right? Mm -hmm. So so you have an entrance and an exit, yep. right? Is this what we're talking about here? Exactly. This is an accurate description, and this is your trough, right? Yes. I don't know how to spell. How do you spell trough? T R O U G H G H. All right, so I don't know if you can see that, 
But down on the bottom here, you have the beach, and then right above that, you're gonna have your trough, and then you're in open ocean here. So you're gonna have an entrance, and this is all made by sand. Right. So you've got your sandy beach on one side that you're fishing on, and then on the other side of that, you're gonna have a sandbar that can either run parallel with the beach or on an angle with the beach, and whether the tide is coming left to right or right to left, you're gonna see an entrance into that trough and an exit out of that trough. And what's gonna happen? Striper are gonna... They're gonna sit there and wait it. Push. They're gonna the, push it. They're are they just, waiting for the bait to come in on, the, yeah, on they, its they, own? They're inside the trough and they're waiting. Okay. They're just waiting for that bait to be swept by. And as the tide's dropping, they're gonna get closer to those that exit. So a lot of times, I'd wait till that certain point in the tide where I go to certain spots where I knew those fish would be stacked up, and sure enough, nine times out of ten, those fish would be stacked up. There. So they're waiting for a specific time in the tide for there to be an ambush point. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Exactly. Yep. That's then, killer information, man. Yeah, that is and, killer. And then I always round up my night with a spot I've taken you to that... Uh, it's a nice yes. little spot. It's yes, a nice little dude. spot. It's, a it's nice, killer. It's a, it's it's a so killer spot right. that's really not it doesn't, well known. But yeah, no. There's a lot of big fish in there, dude. It's it's. I think that people get so stuck on like you know, you know all the major fishing spots that they forget to like explore. Yeah. Like you know, you all of, like the factors of current and flow and bait and everything else. Like you know, goes and works in. You know, small areas, much bigger areas, you know, if factors that you're taking from a spot that you might be used to or people fish at often uh, will also work in other places. You know, don't be afraid to go explore. You might be pleasantly surprised. Absolutely. Um, and Henry's got a lot of spots like that that are little, you know, off the beaten path things. Uh, I was lucky enough for him to share one of them with me and... It can be a killer spot. Man. Everything makes sense. It's just small. Um, and, and you can get on a ton of fish and it can get you on fish when you, you know weren't expecting to be on them. It's, um, a, it's a good spot if you have had a zero night to actually get a fish so you don't feel bad on that 45 minute ride home. <laughs> I know. It's the, you know, and that, the drive home with fish, I feel like I'm like, yeah. you know, not driving off the side of the road, but drive home when I didn't catch any fish and I like hate myself. <laughs> exactly. I uh, have to put in like, in, <laughs> yeah. and a lot of guys will go out for like three, four hours. I'm like a maniac. I'll, I'll go out for six hours. Yeah. I mean, a whole you tide, know. like you gotta, yeah. it's tough that, that three, I don't know. I, 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 if you're in a pattern, um, you know, that three or four hours thing works. Maybe like mm -hmm. if you've established something going into like June, July, um, and you've got a, a pattern established and you can kind of be successful in this window and you know that you're going to be successful right. in the window. But other than that, like not fishing when the tide starts to move, at least in the beginning of the year, not fishing when the tide starts to move from a slack. Yeah. Um, and then not, you know, fishing it to the end. Like if you fish the beginning of the tide, how do you, and then you, you got into fish or you didn't get into fish. Oh, how do you know what's happened at the end of the tide? Cause there's so many instances right. where. The fish don't show up until you know halfway through the tide right. because they know that that's when that area is going to be successful for them to feed. Yeah. So, and there's a lot of guys that'll just go to spots and just uh, you know they'll stay a half hour and say there's nothing here. I, you got to stay and grind out spots sometimes, and you know it takes a lot of time to learn. Sometimes you, I've been out some nights where I've been out like three or four hours, not even get a bite. Yeah. All of a sudden, it gets to that certain point in the tide where, like, holy shit, the fish just showed up, and my night just got turned around. I went from a uh, four hours of disappointment to six hours of uh, texting you, like, yeah, I know. damn, this was great. <laughs> Henry is so good for, like, the, I'll have to be up at 5 or 6 a.m., and Henry is so good for, like, the 1 a.m. text message <laughs> of, like, 17 fish. <laughs> oh, my God, it's brutal. <laughs> and then I text him back when I wake up because I don't feel bad if he's sleeping. <laughs> um, you know, and, 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 and killer. Um, so, you know, that was, we, we just talked about a lot of things that like you figured out that you've made make sense that you've been successful with, you know, where, where did, like, how did you implement those things in your process of like learning how to fish and be proficient? Like, how did you put things into place? Um, where like, you know, you started to be successful. Like what, what, you know, I guess it's kind of vague the way I'm asking it, but. I kind of get where you're going. I, like I, your I, learning curve of the whole yeah. thing, you know? I, I'm a big fishing history buff. I uh, I read a lot when I was younger, like 
Frank Dano was. I actually had the pleasure of fishing with him a few times. If anybody knows who Frank Dano is, he used to be. Uh, he's still around. Uh, I think Toby Lipinski and Jerry Odette are doing a video with him. Yeah. And uh, he's a tremendous fisherman. I have a book. I still got to find for you. I want to get. I uh, want you to read. I don't know how to uh, read. But his book, my twenty years on the Cape, was just. It, that really kicked off my stripe of uh, craziness. The amount of fish they caught out there and, and how they fished, it was insane. Uh, I read a, a lot about Hal fishery. Lyman. Uh, I go down the list. Dennis Zambrata, John Skinner. I mean, they've all had tremendous impacts by just reading their stuff. And again, uh, listening to Surfcaster's Journal. Huge. Right? I've listened to every episode. I, I've I listened get, multiple times. If I'm going yeah. fishing late at night, I'll turn that Put that on. on the radio instead I, of like... Yeah, I'll yeah. listen to the podcast and yep. I'll... I'll re-listen to different ones. Like, Steve Campo's intriguing. I love... I'm not a maniac like him. Like, I'm not going to, you know, Dude. change my spool every Henry, time. Henry, you're going to get me wrong. going right now. Steve What's that? Ca- you're going to get me going right now. Steve Campo, man. Oh, his four episodes oh, are, the, cra- are yeah. the craziest oh, yeah. four episodes of, of yeah. fishing. He used a New York City parking sign yeah. as a guard oh. for his freaking gaff. Yeah. But it's the, and he would bring... How many needles? Uh, he would, a plug bag. Well, you wouldn't needles. have plugs. You wouldn't have hooks on no his hooks on him. He'd do it in the dock. It nuts. This uh, nuts all cut, and he would turn yeah. them on, and he would bring four, uh, four spools with him in case he nicked the line. Insane, yeah. just I insane. Mean, I mean, but I'm not that crazy. But he crazy. does have a lot of good stuff. You know, there's so many guys on there that you can learn from, and again, you cater it to your own needs. I mean. Campbell said it best. Anything will work at any time. It depends on the The situation. same guy that says that, anything will work at any time. Steve Campbell had 27 Super Strike needles in his bag, yeah. and each one had a different millimeter, oh, yeah. milliliter of mercury in them that he would test all day and then bring them out with him and fish them all night long. I know. This, it's you know, crazy. I, I, could, I could fit, I'll, instead of fishing, instead of, Fitting four needles in my tube, I could fit eleven yeah. if I didn't have hooks in it. Yeah. Oh my God, crazy. I mean, the old guys like Tim Coleman and all those guys. I used to read constantly about how they fish. Yeah. Uh, and you just evolve from there. You know, you go with the times, and the times have changed dramatically from when I first started. And that so that impacted the way that you started to learn about striped fish, striped oh, bass God, fishing. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I like your old. I I like that. I don't want to call you old school. It is I old like, school. I like the, I'll go with that. I, I, like, the, I like the old school approach. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and I see like, like to just to like go on social media for a second, because I always like to do that. I mean, here we are on social media platforms right now. Um, there are so many groups that, you know, you post pictures of fish and like a guy will take a picture of a fish and it's got sand on it and guys will just tear him apart because there's some sand on a fish. And, you know, Stripers, I'm all about handling them safely. Always need to revive when you're letting a fish go. Um, what's going on, man? Thanks. That that's awesome. Thank you for tuning in. Um, you know, wow. you need to revive uh, when you're letting them go. I absolutely hate seeing guys just send a fish into the ocean from like you know 15 oh, feet in the air. Nothing I hate worse. I hate confrontation, but oh my god, if that's an instance that I want to say something, it's it's right then. I but anyway, so striper, you know, striper gets a little sand on it, man. As soon as it goes back to the water, the sand is coming off, and the fish is going to regenerate the slime that's on the outside of the fish. Chill out, everybody, yeah. relax. It's yeah. gonna be okay. Yeah. The thing lives in the ocean. It's gonna be all right. I'm going on a tangent. I'm sorry. Just old, you know, think about. Like we're going to say in old school, like the way that people used to handle fish to what we've got going on now. Be right. nice to each other, Jesus. Right. <laughs> I've seen guys at the shops that like I, I won't go out on the beachway anymore. Like I've been out, I'll fish the beachfront like, pretty well there. I've seen fourteen. I've seen fist fights. Out, guys screaming at each other. Guys throwing forty pound fish like like they footballs. I know and these the fish, fish are not going to survive. No. They're bouncing off of four rocks before they hit the water. Yep, it's it's almost disgusting to watch. To be honest with you, and they just get in line to do it again. Yeah, exactly, it's, it's, and you can hear them screaming at each other. I'm like, no, I'm good. The old days when I used to fish on the beachway, I, I back when it, before when I was a young guy, a good looking guy back in the old days. Here we go. You're very handsome, Henry. <laughs> I uh, this guy Angelo took me under his wing, 
and uh, there's actually a plaque out there, and he must have liked me, because if he didn't like you, he would cut your line and throw you in the water. If you tangled, if you screwed up the rotation, oh yeah, you were screwed. Yep. But uh, he was a great guy. He taught me a lot. Angelo was uh, he was a hell of a fisherman. I like that man. I I think that everybody's got like a mentor, you know, somebody that they uh, learned a lot from, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so back to you know things I've got written down here that I need to write down, or else I'll forget them. Um, we were talking about holdovers and fresh fish and, you know, the difference. And like you were saying that your first fish in April, right? You were saying we're holdover fish. Now, in the back bays that we've got, and there's a bunch of them in this New England area, I'm not talking about any specific ones. When do you think that those fish are pushing out into, like, like oceanfront water uh, and coming out of, like, back ponds and stuff like that. When do you think those fish are pushing out? Like, when are they going to take that outflow, that outgoing tide, and follow that outgoing tide into the ocean? I, I'm not a biologist by any stretch. But no, but you're I, a fisherman. I, I, yeah, you're a fisherman. I, I, I would think once the bait starts arriving in full force, mm. you know, mm. by the time the herring run peters off, like at the end of June, mm -hmm. now you get the, if the bunker around, you know, you got... They're going to be following the bunker. If that bay fills up a bunker like it usually does, there's fish from Newport to Providence everywhere. I know, but like what? Like that's... Are you saying that the fish from Newport to Providence are the fish that are already here? Like this No, fish those here. are fresh fish. Oh, the, oh I'm talking I see about the fish that are here already right now. Dumping out. When do those fish come out and become lively and active? Is it before new fish come in? Is it oh, I the same before, time? No, I think it's before the new fish come in. I think they get, again, this is my opinion. Yep. I think they're just getting on that herring, you know, and I've seen pictures of people seeing bunker now washed up on the shore. I saw something this morning. I think it was done from Westerly. Somebody had a bunker up on the beach. So who knows? Yeah, you know, a bunker I, up on the beach in Westerly. That's yeah, nuts. You know, who knows? No, I, mean, I want to know what you think. I yes, think it's, who knows, I think it's, a, I I think think it's think. a herring. I think you think so that I, they're going to follow the herring out. Absolutely. So like, the herring are spawning. And then once they start dumping out. Now, right? Yeah. Herring are coming up the fish right. ladder now. Yeah. And they're spawning now. They're just so, so within the next 10 days, two weeks. Probably two to three weeks. Two to three weeks. Or coinciding with this new moon, you think that fish are going to start venturing out and yes. then coming back in and then venturing out and coming back I in. I think they're going to stay out if there's I think enough. Gonna stay out. I think they're going to stay out if there's enough bait out there. Mm. You know, the water's getting warmer, so they, they want to get out and start feeding for real. They've been living on all that, whatever they're digging up, shellfish. Yeah, you know, whatever they're living on in the back bays. Well, that's really the point. Like Don, Don and Gilbert Stewart, they're grubbing on whatever down in the bottom there. Or mm. there is mullet. There was mullet down there all winter. So... I don't know. Wombat. I'm, I'm, Wombat got a nice fish. I see you. You got a nice fish. Mm, I'm watching you. Uh, but no, this. Yeah, uh, you know, the winter the winter bait, man, like, I think that, I don't know what happens to needlefish in the wintertime. You know, I don't know if they hold over, if they all just get eaten up. Uh, but there's eels. There's, you know, there's natural right. eels that are in there. There's, uh, you know, grass shrimp that, you know, go, go right into the wintertime. So I think that... Stripers have the opportunity to feed heavily um, until the herring show up, and you know that kind of keeps them. Right. I mean, hell, I don't want to. say They're holdover fish, and I don't want to say keeps them held over. Right. But I guess you know that's exactly what's going on. Yeah. Um, I... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, so yeah. I think that's. I think that's what they're looking for is the herring, and then I think once those bunker arrive. That's when you start really getting a big push of the fresh run fish that are moving up the coast now and you follow the, what is it, the on the water stripe of migration. I think that that on the water stripe of migration map is two weeks to one month late. I think it's a month late. Yep, two and weeks usually, to one month late. Usually I'm catching fish in April and they're saying they're still in Jersey and I don't, in Rhode Island. Henry, how you doing, Chappie? Um, I think that, like, I don't know how they decide to, like, 
make it yellow or red or green yeah. or whatever they do, like coming up the coastline. I don't know, like or they have to. Or they don't buy old records. Or I don't know if it's photos being sent in. You know. Yeah. Yeah, but if you look at if you look at he's saying it's the it's map is based off year. of last year, but look at this year's map compared to last year's map, they're different. Right. Yeah, I I don't know, maybe it's by reporting fish. I don't know. I don't know. know. I think it might be I think it yeah, I'm sure this is easy. I'm sure we can look it up and right. find the like, actual being, answer. It's probably being reported. I think I it's the the pictures that are sent in by That's people. Right. Yeah. 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 Um What else you got, Henry? You covered all my topics, a whole bunch of stuff. You got some really good information in there, man. Um, what else you got? Fish teasers, man. Fish uh, teasers. I, I'm telling yeah. you, a lot of guys are missing the boat on it. Uh... Oh, Ooh. thanks, Really? Buddy. Really, Thank dog? you, bud. That was awesome. Yep, not nice. Yeah, I know. That's not bad. Uh, get out there and grind, baby. You gotta, you gotta put in the time, and it'll pay off. It will definitely pay off. I mean, last year was, it was an anomaly, I think. I've never... I've never fished through December like that in my life and caught fish as big as I did. It was crazy. I just hope it happens again. And maybe it's global warming. I don't know what it is. Uh, we'll see what this year brings. It's global, hard to tell. Global warming. We're not going to get into that. I, I, well, <laughs> think about it. You still had water in the high 40s in December. Yeah. I mean, the water was warmer than the air. I was sticking my hands in the water. To be warm. To be warm. I know all the time, like in you know, the in the fall in the wet my leg, in the fall in the wetsuit, I find myself like getting up on the rock and then like get back getting in back in the water yeah, and, like every fifteen twenty minutes yeah. to try to warm back up again. When you're on fish and your adrenaline is going, uh, you don't have to do that as much. But when you're kind of just grinding it out, do I throw medals? Yes, I do. I throw. Oh, the other one I throw a lot too. Oh, come on, buddy. buddy. Uh, come on, pennies. Vinny's is another guy from the club who makes a very good metal lip. I've caught my biggest fish this year was a 43 inch uh, that was caught on a Vinny's yellow. I uh, can't give him enough props, too. He's another guy from the club that does a phenomenal job with uh, plugs. I do like metals, yes. And RM Smith makes another one. Oh, Will can't go out without. Will's famous uh, South County swimmer. And then, uh... Henry, this one doesn't have any scratches on it. No, it's brand new. I'm gonna, it's gonna get scratches on it. And another favorite of mine is the R.M. Smith. The two ounce. Uh, absolutely crush it with those. That's pretty much what I fish. I got nothing to say about metal lips, and everybody knows that. I'm trying. I'm trying. I've been throwing. Not a metal lip guy. Huh? No, I, but I got. I've gotten since I've started talking about that. Um, I've gotten a few metal lips from some guys, and uh, I've got some top order ones now that I've been throwing as, while I'm fishing. I, I now. like the. I like the that top water to that one to two yeah. foot range. Yeah, I think it's the most versatile plug out there. And the profile of it, man, it, it is a killer profile. I mean, that imitates everything. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. You know, this too. Wells, the same thing, you know? Yep. I mean, you go right down the line, you're like, right there. I know, the imitation, the robot. Lance, I mean, Scotty's, I mean, you, there's so many. And then, for Jigs, we all we all know the guy himself, Uncle Fish. Yeah! So, always got to have Uncle Fish in the bucket. I like the, this uh, one. Bag. This is one of my early ones that I yeah. was putting up the plastic teaser on, I and mean, the plastic trailer on. Yeah. Um, I like that a lot. And the other thing I got this year is uh, a new bag from uh, Luke at Z-Belt. Uh, I'm still working out the uh, kinks in it, how I'm going to set it up, but this is going to be dynamite this year. I, I got a bad neck, so the neck bag is uh, not working for me. So this is going to be awesome once I get set up straight. Uh, there's another another one from Zinger I can't wait to try out. This could be good this spring. Uh, you got me these at yeah, the yeah. show. The, yep. These cracking. I think that might be good at the herring run with a beast hook in it. How are you going to rig this? Just are you going to... I, 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 I thought I, had, I didn't bring a rig one. Are you going to rig this? With a beast hook. Just like, a beast hook. But the hook coming... like So it's going to be... Your profile is going to be like this? Or yes. you're gonna rig it no. Your profile is going to be like that? Like this? Like that. Gotcha. I think that's the way it's meant to be rigged. And then I got your... Uh, lead heads if I go to deeper water, but yeah, where, yeah. I, where I fish in the spring, it's you know six to seven feet of water, so I think that'll be perfect. Anything I'm else? trying to like digest all the information you just shared with us. 
A little bit, but <laughs> it, it's it's basic stuff. Get out there and grind and learn your area. That's the hardest thing. You know, Charlie, our good friend Charlie, I learned more from that kid in two years than I learned in a lifetime from a lot of guys. I could I could text that kid at two o'clock in the morning and he'd be answering, I'm having a sucky night. Hey, do this, do this, do this, go to this spot. I'd text him back an hour later, I'd have four fish. I'd be like, damn, you know it all. Um, you know it all. Man, he, he, was, was, he was a phenomenal, I he, mean, he, he was had, a miserable yeah. bastard. If he didn't like you, forget uh, it. He, if he didn't like you, you knew he didn't like oh, you. Oh, God, I've been out with him so nice where yep. I'd see lights coming down and be like, get the fuck out of here. Uh, but that was Charlie. Gotta Bruce, love the kid. Bruce has got so many stories where he, uh, he will take too long. To get oh. like geared up at the car and <laughs> oh, Charlie would be skimming over rocks. Yeah, Charlie would be on. Uh, Charlie would be on the fish already, and by the time uh, Bruce would show up to fish with them, <laughs> I I the was at, would be over. I was at a spot one night. I'd been there like a half hour. All of a sudden, I hear footsteps behind me. It was him. He's like, "Hey, how's it going?" I'm like, "I haven't got a hit yet." Two casts. He's like, "They're not here. I'm going to another spot." And he was like, "Go on before I." I'm like, "Where the hell?" And he's, "You gotta climb stairs and up." I'm like. What the hell? How do you do it? I've it's got, crazy. I've got one of those big metal lips that he made. You know, yeah, he, he I made, got I got a few that he made. He made yeah. a few of those, and I uh, I struggle to fish it because I don't want to lose it. Yeah. But I know that he would want me to catch fish on it. You know, so I I don't know. I'm, I'm big, torn. My, I'm my, torn about what to do with it. My biggest fish three years ago. Unfortunately, I didn't land it, but I did get eyes on it. His uh, he's got a little Danny that he made me. And that thing must have had some mojo, because, man, I went out one night, and everybody had stopped fishing. This was December. I think it was three years ago. It was the beginning of December. Everybody had stopped fishing, and I was the only idiot still out there, and I was grinding. And I had a couple nights where i come up with, like, four or five fish in the 30s, 40s. And I had one on one night. It was right at my feet, and I would have beat. That was the year Charlie won, the last year he won. Yeah, yeah. With the 49. Yeah. I had him beat. I know I had him beat. It was at my feet. He's listening to you right now. Yeah, you know? I know he is. <laughs> and that's what Dina said. Dina, Dina tells me all the time, I think Charlie got reincarnated in you because you're as, yeah. as nutty as he Oh, is. you showed up on the grind, Henry. You and know, uh, you just put in the so fish much was right at my feet, and it just, the line snapped. I should have checked my leader, but that plug had some mojo, man. It was I missed that plug. Daily. But big sister, I got other ones. Big sister of Charlie says no shelf queen, so I guess I'll have to <laughs> fish I guess I'll have to fish that metal lip. Oh uh, yeah. I do got a couple of shelf queens he made me that I'm never gonna see the water. I know what's up. I don't know if I actually have it in here. But it's a giant yeah. it's a giant metal lip. I got a milk crate of plugs yeah. over there. Um You gotta fish with corkers. Oh, I always like to say that in every every episode you have to fish with corkers. Um Wetsuit over waders for safety, not for being a crazy person and going out swimming. You need to know your limits. You know, put a wetsuit on and uh, you, you're distracting me, chappy. Um, <laughs> you, put a, you know, put a wetsuit on, you know, for the fact that if you fall over and stuff like that, right. your waders don't fill with water. However, if you are fishing like a stormer top and you're using a surf belt, you know, Luke has got great, great test videos of jumping in a swimming pool and not taking on any water. Yeah. Um, you know, with uh, waders with no holes in them. Luke a, makes phenomenal. A stuff. surf bell and a stormer top. You know, you know, makes you cinch everything up. You know, it's fishing, and I understand that it's fishing, but, you know, we all take it to a level where it can become dangerous. Um, you know, and, and everybody wants to go home to their family and stuff like that. I, and I make so much uh, premise on this because I've seen so many times, you know, young kids show up to a spot, you know, I'll kind of be off in the distance and, you know, nobody really knows I'm there, but I'm watching what's going on right. behind me or, you know, to the side of me. And there'll be young kids like in the dark shorts, you know, they probably told their parents, oh, I'm just going to go fish yeah. or they showed up there on their own. They drove there. I don't know. They look young. Um, but, you know, they get hurt. They, oh, you yeah. know, they're out there on the rocks and they got sneakers on. And then all of a sudden you turn yeah. around, boom, and somebody, you know, got a hook in their hand or oh, yeah. you know, the face or they fell down and. <laughs> So you know, I, got a, I, got a good no good. I got a good story about Bruce. This was like three years ago, and uh, I'm fishing one of my spots, and Bruce calls me. He goes, hey, you close by? I say, yeah, what's up? He goes, 
I just stuck a hook in my hand. He was <laughs> before I got there. He'd already cut it out. I'm like, oh my are you going? Are you going to the hospital? Go. Like, yeah, I'll go tomorrow. <laughs> Something huge to have is like I got these bolt cutters. I got these bolt cutters um, from Harbor Freight. Those are the same ones I got. For, they, they were yeah. less than ten dollars, yeah. and I use them. I use them um, for cut hooks to like to cut a hook and put yeah. it on a plug. Um, but when the fishing season is like really underway and I'm out there often, these are going to be in the van or in the truck um, because I'd rather. I'm always under the belief I'd rather have and not need than need and not have. And I think, because karma is a bitch, that if you have the stuff that you need, then the thing that is you know, potentially gonna happen to you maybe won't happen to you. Um, but if you don't have it, sure, then shit, it's gonna happen. Yeah, um, I've stuck myself several times with hooks. Yeah, and that's the other thing about doing the one single hook is yep. uh, you, know, you have less of an opportunity. Exactly, I've seen guys hook themselves so many times. It's crazy. So, mental health is huge. Check on your friends, always. Oh, speaking of a wetsuit, I think I, I was talking to you earlier. I think I'm, I'm sick of destroying my weight as we were talking about going over. I, I don't skip over rocks like you guys do. I yeah. crawl over them like an old man. Yeah. So I crawl too. I, I take I, my I time, see man. I see you on rocks, dude. You skip, you hop, skip, and jump on a crawling. Well, maybe I, that yeah. night I was excited, but yeah. I like to take it slow. But I, I, I am going to get a set of Farmer Johns because I'm sick of destroying waders. Dude, wetsuit, I, like surf shops, wetsuits, are high brand yeah. name wetsuits are so expensive. Wetsuit warehouse, you don't need to that's buy. A, that's where Sean yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't need to buy like this fancy brand name wetsuit. It's going to be junk right. in a season. Right. Um, you know, spend a hundred bucks, spend hundred and fifty bucks, buy a Farmer John wetsuit, which is just you know like a, it looks just like your waders yeah. do. Same setup, it's just so, you know neoprene shoulder straps. Uh, you know, honestly, like kind of sports bra style setup. Um, you know, like tank top kinda, and then uh, no sleeves, and wear your surf top. Yeah. Or I wear like uh, if it's a warm night. Sometimes I'll just do the farmer john. Right, yeah. But if I want, if I want, if, I want, on, if yeah. I want arm protection, I'll wear like uh, you know, like on the water. Yeah. It's got those like uh, neo dry fit. the dry, dry fit shirts. Yeah. I'll wear a dry fit shirt because then when I swim, it doesn't like water flows right. in and out of the shirt and it drains. Yeah. You know that you know so so uh, you no. Know, I'm gonna do. I would like to do an episode on here of like wetsuiting and the like, gear of wetsuiting and uh you know how to be comfortable and not be comfortable because there's a lot of guys that ask questions like that um you know about you know two three or three fours or five six wetsuits well, we and both, what's comfortable we, we, we and, both want to go listen to jerry over at the saltwater's edge and i think i'm he suggested a three mil which i don't know is that what yours is a three mil? i have a two three and then i have a five so, so you like yeah, two, so three. I like the two three for the summertime. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think I'm gonna get. Uh, and do you wear the long dry fit pants under them mm -mm. so you don't chafe? Mm. I don't chafe. No, no, I'm not. I didn't really understand that whole chafing bit. I don't know. I mean, I've never also worn didn't, it, so. I didn't really understand the not having ankle support uh, from your footwear. That doesn't really no, make any I sense. I just got these boots, so. <laughs> Hopefully I get plenty of ankle support. I want ankle support from yeah. my boots. So. Yeah, I do too. I got, I got a fused ankle, so I need, yeah. all, I need all the support I can get. You know, sticking your foot in between a rock and another rock and, yeah, and your body getting yourself going hung up and twisted. Yeah, yeah it's, you know, it's, it's dangerous. What we do is dangerous, so we're just safety. You know, no, just... I got blown off a rock last year so bad. Yeah. I, I'm lucky I didn't break my head open. Man, I've had so many falls that I just, I, you know when you like fall and you're like, oh yeah. You just stay there for two seconds, and you're like, all right, no, you're waiting gonna... for something to start to hurt, you know? <laughs> like, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was bent down on a rock. I was getting ready, to, and I heard it, and I looked up, and it didn't even break over my head. It just hit me square right here, yeah. enough where you're not, and it just knocked me flat back. I was like, son of a... Yes, God. dude, and then you get wet. Oh, oh, it you, was horrible. Your, God forbid your plug bag is open. You got plugs floating all around. I you. think uh, it was. Yeah, yeah I, I had plugs out of it. Yeah. It was a yard sale. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, anything else, man? Um, I hope we all have a good fishing season. Yeah. Stay safe. Season's just about here. Yeah, stay safe, and uh, hopefully... Hopefully it's a good year like last. Last year was a little, it was different. I'm not saying it was a bad year. I mean the end, the beginning was good. The end was good. The middle, the middle was kind of middle, middle was, was kind of iffy. Dude, the middle was a. Grind. I mean we were texting each other. Where yeah. are the fish? Yeah. Where are the fish? Where yeah. can I go? Where can I yeah. go? And you know, 
And I think on a small network like that, like oh, oh that's I, huge. I talked to Henry and like maybe three or four other guys, yeah. and uh, you know, I I think that that's really important. And some of the guys I talk to like are not on social media. They're right. never gonna post about right. it. You're never gonna see them. Never gonna talk to them. Um, you know. I think that it's really important to have a small network that's tight and you guys talk to each other. I went on like the one man show thing for a while yeah. and it was hard, dude. It was yeah. like really hard because like you don't, having a couple guys that you can trust and talk to, right. you kind of can be in two places at once, you yeah. know, you, you and then you can divide and conquer. Like there right. was a lot of times last year that it was, you know, uh, say we have a three man fishing group. Like two guys will go fish over here, right. and I'll go fish over here, and we'll both give it an hour, and, and I, whoever's on fish, will will go. Like we did same, that a couple I, of times. I, last I do year. the same thing. Yeah. With, like there's a couple of friends I fish with in the spring that are in a call with my buddy Matthew and my uh, buddy Mark, and we're like the three amigos in the spring down at our spring spot. But as the season goes on, Mark likes to fish a, another spot, and I'll fish one spot, and we'll communicate back and forth. You know, spots better or whatever. Yeah. He's doing what, and you and I will do the same. Yeah, thing. having that small network, you know, without telling the world, you know, our spots are overrun as it is. Yeah, you know, and I, I understand it's for everybody. But, yep. You know, sometimes you just want to keep it to yourself. I so. get, you know, and I get, uh, you know, sharing, and it's not, you know, a spot is not anybody's specific spot, right. and you right. know. I get a dude. I understand all that, um, but it's just like I want to be able to go where I want to be able to go and fish, right. and not have somebody else be standing right. on the rock that I want to fish on. Right. And I understand that that might sound selfish, um, but, but I think that's that the reality. I think that everybody that's going to listen yeah. to this podcast feels the same way. Like, like Big Jim just said. Yeah. Five, five guys. That's it. There's probably five guys I trust with. Get right. Out of spot. Right. That you know, other guys, I'm not going to tell them what I want because they're going to tell everybody in the world. Right. They're going to post it on whatever. You know. And, and I've been, I've been on a good bite where I haven't told a soul, not even you. Yeah. I go the next night. There's like eight, I know. eight guys there. Like how? Yeah. Why? I know. Is it luck that they just showed up or what? I don't you know. know? I don't and it's know. so funny, like, like all those guys though, right? If they don't get on fish. They won't show up the next night. Yeah. You know, they won't. If they get on fish, maybe they'll show up. But if they don't get on fish, they won't be there and, the next night. In that one particular instance I was talking about, uh, I was on fishing, but I was on the teasers. And these guys had all come down from New York and Canada. I was talking to them. And they really didn't know how to fish the spot well. And I'm just, I'm just tagging fish left and right. And they're just, <laughs> what? What? And I, I had a couple of teasers, so I gave them the teasers. And all of a sudden, they were like, Bang and fish, so they were happy. So, awesome. did my good deed. Yeah, I you know I believe in the karma thing, so definitely, absolutely. Um, so yeah, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. This is a great happy. episode. Uh, you know, you were like, "Are you sure, man? You you have you shared some fantastic information." Thanks. I wasn't uh, sure what I'd have to offer at the end. Uh, and you know, I think once you get talking about uh, you know fish fish stuff, man, you. Especially just con in conversation like this, because you talk while you're fishing, right? right? But I think in conversation like this, you know, you start to pull out things that maybe you thought you forgot, but are still there, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so so I, I, I like that. Because there's so many things to, you know, that revolve around, you know, I'm going to go to this spot because I think these conditions right. are happening and I don't think I'm going to be this, you know, I think there's going to be a bite over here, so I think I'm going to be successful. Right. And then, you know, you fish, start fishing in another spot and you start, you know, brain starts to think in a different way. And then you've got a life, a wife, grandkids, yeah. houses to fix, windows to install. Yeah. Yeah, all kinds of, <laughs> I mean, my life is pretty good now. My wife, I get the best wife in the world. She doesn't question I'm going fishing okay. When should I worry? I'll call you in the morning if um, I'm not home yet to make sure I'm alive. You know, That's goes, as much the guy she is. If the sun's up and you haven't I heard from me, give my, me a call. My wife is the best. Even when we had kids, she, you know, when they were younger, I could go within reason. And then once I get into sport, you'll find out. Once your kids are into sport, fishing's going to take a back burner. You're lucky if you get out once a week. Yeah, you know, I And there may be a point where... You're coaching your kids, and you might not be getting out at all. Fishing will be on the back burner for a while, which happened to me because I coached a lot of sports. But I'm so glad I got back into it, and uh, I love it. It's 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 a drug, man. It's addictive. Yeah. Like it it's once you get it, 
Once you get it in your blood, you just... I, can't, I lay in bed at night and I'm thinking, oh, I can't wait. How am I going to fish this spot? How, what should I be throwing? And my wife goes, you're a nut. <laughs> but that's the way you got to be if you want to be a good fisherman. You know, all the... the just being out there, like I've been out, uh, you know, a couple times in the last week or so, and, you know, just getting out there mm. and experiencing, um, you know, the world in a way that not, in a way that a small percentage of the population experiences the world. Yeah. Like, who out of the population of people goes out in the middle of the night and experiences the ocean in the darkness, you know, or experiences, experiences you know, animals that live in the ocean up close and personal like that, you know, like we do. And then the opportunities to interact with animals that are uh, I, I got 20, 20, 30 years old. I you got know? chased off the beach last year by a coyote. And then, the, like, <laughs> dude, like, all, like yeah. all the adventures that come from, you know, the striped bass fishing thing, uh, the people you meet, and the uh, situations you get involved in, and the I've, places you go. And, I've seen a lot know, of Right them. here, doing this show, like, you know. We've seen a lot of him out there. Yeah, man. Crazy. You're walking down the beach, and there's, like, a coyote walking 15 feet away I, from you. It doesn't give, give a shit that you're there, I, but... Last year, we're going to shine your light in the woods, I, and this. I was on one night last year, we got a chance. I was looking up in the sky, and we saw the Stalin. That you, too, man. That I, too. I, 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 we were in awe, just sitting, me and my brother sitting there going, look, that's a Stalin. We thought it was the aliens. It was the coolest thing I had ever seen. I think that, like, something huge that I think sh people should do uh, is go to Black Island and, like, mm. don't make it into this, like, giant thing where you gotta, you know, be here and, you know, find a place to stay and make it really expensive. Like, get your truck or your car, book it in advance to get on the ferry, uh, packs, you know, bring a friend, pack up your car in a way that you can kind of sleep in it. And, uh, you know, you're going to get people that tell you that you're not allowed to do that. Yes, you are. Go to yeah. the police station. Tell them you're there fishing for the night. They do not care. I promise you. Um, but go to the police station and just say, hey, this is my car. We're here fishing for the night. We're leaving tomorrow or we're leaving Sunday. All you have to do, communication goes a long way. Yeah. Um, so that's it. So that that's done. So don't ever worry about that. Uh, but go over there. Take the ferry over there. Bring your gear with you and just go fishing. Bring some food with you. Make it a weekend thing. Um, grind it out, um, you know, fishing on Block Island in the middle of the ocean, you don't feel like you're anywhere near home. Um, it's a beautiful experience, and I think that there is not enough people that have, you know. I, I did it once a long time ago, and it was only for a night, but I do want to, once I get my surgeries in order here, yeah. I'd like to uh, go out there one time. Maybe we can hook up. Yeah, definitely. Up there for sure. Definitely, man. Definitely. You know? One more thing I just want to say is, like, uh, Guys, don't forget your local plug makers. Like, uh, I, I, I know, like him, he makes beautiful bucktails. You got Thank you, uh, man. Will Smith. Uh, I appreciate that. You know, Lance from Wicked Schooly. Obviously, my buddy Scott Lawson makes tremendous plugs. Vinny's, uh, Ryan, Solstice, Gremlin. These guys, they make working man plugs. They're great plugs. Uh, and We're they lucky. work. They yeah, work. We're really lucky. We're really lucky we have these guys in the club. You know, we got our club is tremendous. We got and this year they're again the surf casters. Yeah. And and it was your idea. We got the Inter Club tournament yeah, with us in the Newport. In the Newport. Yep. Uh, Dennis is uh, all happy about that. And it was it was my nephew Sean idea. We're gonna try to get some little pins made like the Schaefer pins like the old like you're a historian, the old Schaefer yes. pins. Yes, yep. With uh, a tournament like the Yes. And uh we got the name for it, the East West. Uh, uh, what, what did they say? Well, the East West, like Striper Challenge. Striper something. Challenge. Yeah. That's what it was. East West Striper Challenge. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Like bring some old inter club uh, stuff back to Rhode Island, like it used to be back in the day. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely, man. For sure. Definitely. You know, I um, like that. A lot of those local builders. Thank you, Boo. Uh, a lot of those local builders will be at the. Saltwater Edge show yep. on Saturday. Yep. Um, I will not be there, unfortunately, um, but a lot of the great builders will be there. So definitely check oh, that yeah. out if you want to, and uh, you know, you know, check it out. I'll be there in person, but I unfortunately don't have a table there. Um, I'll be there for about an hour, and then my son's got a baby shower in Western Mass. That's important. <laughs> yeah, my <laughs> wife will be a little pissed if I miss that one. Um, so check it out. Um, Dave Anderson will be there. 
Um, you know, he'll have, Frank, he'll Frank, have his plugs. You know, Gonzalez yeah. will be there. Larson, Will, right, will. Larson, yep. The, the, um, look up Scotty. There's good. And who with the antagonizer are going to be there? Yep. North Calcat. Is he? I think North Calcat's coming. Uh, a lot of guys like him. I'm, I'm really not a big fan of his, but a lot of guys like him. Uh, but there's going to be tremendous. Voorhees will be there, I'm sure. He'll sell out in like yeah, 10 minutes. <laughs> Yeah. He'll bring his 40 plugs and sell it in 10 minutes, but he makes great stuff. Henry, I won one. one. I am. Yeah, for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> then so I'm I leaving. Then Henry, I'm leaving. Henry's going to go in and buy the stuff that he needs. Yeah, I'm say gonna, I'm say, say hello, hello and then leave. <laughs> I'm just going to figure out what time I'm going to be out of there to get home to go to Western Mass. Oh, oh, otherwise, man. I'm dead. Yeah, that's great. And then so we got a shower the weekend after too. So yay! Well, you know, what do you have, kids? Stuff. I, you know, we'll see. I'm trying, man. I know. I'm trying. So thank you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Um, next weekend is I've got uh, my regular job. I've got the home show. Um, so I, I'm kind of gonna be busy with that. And then uh, I. Uh, <laughs> Um, I've got of the home, course. the home show and then I'm taking a quick vacation. So maybe we'll do a little, little podcast. Um, you know, I'm going down to the, uh, Florida Keys to do some tarpon and snook fishing, um, with, uh, my wife and Brian and his wife and another friend, Chris. Um, so we uh, are going to go do some fishing down there. Henry tied up some awesome teasers and a fly for me to catch some fish on down there. I'm going to get a big topping on that. Big I'm going to bring, um, some of my bucktails. Um, so I'm super pumped about that. So I'll definitely post a little bit about that. Guys that have uh, private orders in, I am working on those. And we are stocking up a couple of tackle shops. Um, Sam's Bait and Tackle, Charlestown Breachway Bait and Tackle, and Hooked Up Bait and Tackle. Wow. Um, there are a couple other tackle shops that have been nice. interested in our bucktails. So, uh, you know, we'll be figuring that out too. Um, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to try to get another show going as soon as possible. You know, a couple other things going on, too. So, good stuff. Thanks for having me. I you appreciate it, bro. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. you, guys. Come on, puppy. Let's get it. How'd I do all right? Oh, excellent. Yeah, I don't... I, I definitely...